Let's be honest. We don't know anything about our elected officials. They're hidden behind curated social media profiles and press releases to the point that they often seem barely human. We're here to break down those barriers and get under the hood of their real character. Our guest today is the mayor of Clinton, New Jersey, Janice Kovach. I'm Scott Salmon, and this is Politically Driven. What's your spirit animal? If, if, you, if you have given us any thought, which would kind of surprise me, but... <laughs> no, well, surprise, don't be surprised, because... Okay. Um, so, a friend of mine, uh, who's my, my partner in the... My business partner in the film festival, um, recently got married, and I did their ceremony for them. And we happened to be talking one day, and she gave me a gift uh, for doing the ceremony, and it's actually... Um, she believes that my spirit animal is a hummingbird. Huh. So she had the hummingbird bracelet made for me. You have to show it off to the camera. I have to show it off to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she had it made, and that's what she thinks. Now, why, why does she think that's the spirit animal? Because of my energy. Okay. Go right here. Um, and and the the kind of that never-ending and constantly going. Right. Um, so that's what that's what she thinks is, is my spirit animal. I'm like, okay. That's good. That's a good one to get. Yeah. My friends would definitely give me something terrible. Yeah, I, yeah. They would give me, you know, they would give me something made up. They wouldn't even give me like a real animal. It'd be something that, yeah, something just like totally fictional. A jackalope or something. Yeah, something like that. They yeah. would, be, I'm like, that's not, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. No, I hear you. <laughs> that's a good one, though. I like that. Okay. You have a long history uh, of advocating for women in politics. Yes. You've also been mayor uh, here for um, for, um, for some time now. Yes. How has uh, how has women State women in straight. how has um, women in politics uh, just the issues that they're facing how's it how's it changed since since you started off it really hasn't changed at all really which is kind of sad when you think about it yeah. and I think part of it is is because we don't build a bench of women mm-hmm. candidates um, women we we allow because that's really the word uh, we allow women to run. Um, in districts where, you know, we don't necessarily think that they're going to win. Okay. But then we don't keep them engaged. We don't, you know, build on their, what they've learned to really go and, and go beyond. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest piece is that we just haven't built the bench. When, when you say we, who, who, I'm not, I'm not asking you to name names, yeah, but uh, right. what, uh, what, is it just the, the state parties? Is it county level? Is it locally? I think it's everything. I mean, obviously it starts at the local level, getting women to run for office locally. Too many times, we'll take a ride over the, the Pony Trust Bridge so you go right. Okay. Um, too many times, you know, a woman, first of all, women don't step up and raise their hand normally. It, right. It's, you know, we kind of wait to be asked. And, and then when we're asked, it's like, oh, I don't know enough yet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the one thing I always say to anyone that says that, it's like, listen, the guys don't know any more than we do. Yep. They just are much better at, at pretending. And in most yep. cases, we know more because we do the research. You know, we want to understand something. Uh, and that is, you know, it, it's kind of funny. Women don't like confrontation. I'm probably an, an anomaly because I, I thrive on confrontation. You know, someone gets in your face and your first instinct is to step back. You know, and one of the things when I, I do a lot of speaking to young girls, I'm like, don't ever step back when someone gets in your face. Hmm. Because it's, it's power play. So we're talking about women. So, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is that women just, you know, we need to feel empowered to say, yes, I want to run. Um, the one thing, the woman that ran for, for U.S. Senate in Delaware... Uh, she was a self-proclaimed witch, uh, Christine something. Yeah, I know you're talking about, right. And another woman, I think it was Megan McCain, said, well, what did she do, just wake up one morning and decide to run for Senate? That's, and how, my, most, that's how it works for most people. Well, no, but that's how, how do they think the president got to where he is right now? He woke up one morning and said, hey, I'm going to run for president. This, this seems like a good, a good thing to do. Why not? No, that, yeah. and, and no one challenges a guy who does that. Yeah. But we always challenge, a, you know, a woman who, is, who tends to do that. Right. Right. They, well, they get, yeah, they get, they get questioned more about uh, right. the qualifications and the motives and all exactly. those things. Exactly. Right. Or you get the question, oh, well, what does your husband think? Or what does your spouse really? think? First, when I first started to decide to run for, um, <clears throat> when I first ran for mayor, mm-hmm. it was, oh, well, you know, what's your husband think? 
doesn't really matter what he thinks. What, what answer do you? What, what was your response? Was it just? I, I said, who well, cares? it doesn't really matter what he thinks. Right. I'm doing this. Right. And then the same thing when I ran for Congress. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and I even asked. I said, do you ask the, the guys the same question? Well, it's yeah. different. It's not different. No. Not. If I have the the ability to run, now granted, it, it, you know, and if my husband tells me no, I'm obviously still going to do it. <laughs> You know, he's learned the lesson to not say no, um, <laughs> to negotiate in some way, shape, or form. I like it. I like it. We just had a, a group hatch, so there was like 10 ducklings running around town last week. <laughs> like and, being called in the police, something up, we got we to gotta track him here? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, because people, you know, a lot of people who come from out of town don't necessarily know where they're right. going or anything, so it, just it's... follow the ducks. <laughs> they, they know the good restaurants. They They've been the in good, and out of them. They do. <laughs> They stand outside the restaurants. They really? know people. I like the scraps. So we are in the midst of campaigns right now for the for the 2018 election. Yes. What uh, advice would you have for someone else that's running for mayor of their, their hometown? Don't promise to reduce taxes. That's good. <laughs> Don't ever promise to reduce taxes. It's just, it's not a realistic. New Jersey's got, I mean, you look at the number of authorities, it's well over a thousand authorities. Uh, 600 school districts, 565 municipalities, 400 some police right. departments, right. 186 fire districts, 21 counties, and a state government. Not, they, You're not they, need every, they need every penny they can get, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you think about it. I mean, the, the property tax bill, which is the town collects the entire thing. Less than 30 percent of that actually stays with the town. The mm. rest goes to the schools and the counties. Right, right. So that's the other thing that. So even if you're mayor, you're not, and you're not controlling the school school board. You're not even no. going to say have to say over most of it anyway. No, not at all. Mm. I mean, I will tell you that our local school board, you know, the town has a great working relationship with the yeah. the public school, the K to eight public school. Um, the high school obviously is a regional and, and has a much different um, attitude as far as how they work with municipalities. But from the local perspective, we have an amazing superintendent and school board that they work together to try to you know really make things happen. So you have your the, the, it has its own uh, like like yeah. the town of Clinton has its own school school board just yeah. for the just Let's for the kids just for the K to eight and then they go to another school district I guess for the regional high school. Interesting. Yes. Okay, I didn't realize they, I I figured that the, the all the K through eights were uh, controlled by the same school no. board. That control, oh, oh no 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 okay. no! That's why you have six hundred school boards in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> well, yeah. which is always uh, just an insane, yes. insane state. I know up in uh, Bergen County, especially because I think they tried creating extra uh, some additional ones that way they could, could later combine them, right. and I think they stopped halfway through, and it's just become oh, right. become even more of a mess. So, generally speaking, this is kind of broad. Politics and politicians get a get a have a negative connotation with them. Yes. But you've been doing this for for, for some time now. For, uh, what 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 do you like about it? What makes it what makes it worth it? Sure. Yeah, right here. Uh, what makes it worth it is when you actually get to see how you've helped mm-hmm. a community. Um, you know, Clinton. Clinton's always been a dynamic community. It's unique mm-hmm. in so many respects and. You know, while I can't, I won't take credit for the vibrant downtown and, and the the coming together of a community. I think the I wouldn't th- stop you, by the way. If you, did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you know, it re- it's a group effort. Yeah. You know, we really we work hard to do what's in the best interest. And, and is it popular all the time? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Um, my second year as mayor, we had a, a five cent tax increase, mm-hmm. and what I started doing is a budget letter to explain. You know oh, how we got to where we were right. and what we were trying to fix. I mean, we're getting to a point where we're going to, you know, pay off our debt in, a, a, you know, things that we bonded for in ten years, mm-hmm. rather than going to permanent financing mm-hmm. and paying outrageous interest. So, you know, we put a good process in place, mm-hmm. and and people see that. You know, people see when homes are are being bought and sold, mm-hmm. and um, we have awesome events that happen in town. I think the the explanation thing. I think that's part of the reason why or the la- the lack of explanation is part of the reason why politics and politicians get a bad rap. Absolutely, is because they just they do things and they're not up fr- uh, uh, up front about why they did it or, or why it's important, even though if you know, if it's unpopular, things like right. uh, maybe uh, increasing taxes or whatever it is. And I and I just firmly believe that people are smarter than we give them credit for, and they may not understand the nuances of what what a. Uh, like I don't know, like the like the the tax code or what what right. the 
the, what the budget is going to look like, but they can get they get the idea of what of what you're doing and why you're why yes. you're going to do it. And that's why I, listen, you know, elected officials get complacent because people don't necessarily show up to council meetings. They can be boring, mm-hmm. you know. It, you know, you're doing a lot of basic stuff throughout the meeting. We try to have fun at our council meetings. Right. You know, for us, it's... Like Nerf guns and shooting basketballs? And no, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> but we have a bag of candy that, you know, we, oh, okay. you know, once we all get high on some sugar, <laughs> you know, the chocolate really kicks they, in. They get, they get everyone moving. But, but we engage in conversation. You know, I don't... I've never run the meeting where it's just, oh, you know, you got three minutes to talk and it's there's not you no sitting back in the high chair. It's not you, like, sitting in the high chair saying this is what, what's going to happen, just no. running through the agenda. No, it, it's, you know, we try to open it up for, for dialogue. And, we, uh, you know, even the council. So up until this year, I was the only Democrat with an all-Republican council. And... Um, Everyone's like, oh, my God, how, how do you do that? That was actually one of my questions. <laughs> I have to tell you, you know, at the local level, it's not about party politics. Right. We're not dealing with those kinds of issues. But I made sure that I communicated and included everyone in mm-hmm. in the discussions, in the conversations. And I never did anything in a vacuum. I always, you know, made sure I got input so that there, was, there wasn't this thing like, oh, the Democrat is going to try right. and, you know, take us out sort of thing. You know, we work together to get done what we needed to get done for the town. I don't tow a party line. I am a Democrat, absolutely. But I don't follow blindly. For me, it's about what are the issues that are important. And I support people that that share my values. You know, ultimately, I have to, one, feel good about anything that I do. And anything I do, if it were to make the front page of the paper, would my kids be embarrassed? Well, you don't. It might be just embarrassed. It's just well, embarrassed. Should be embarrassed but, I know, general, but the yeah. con, the con, the content. But absolutely. Yes. yes. You know that to me was always kind of my barometer of, you know, where do I hit, right. and it works. You know, I, is everything perfect? Absolutely not. Right. But I think each step along the way, I've learned something. You know, I've become the person I am through trial and error, just like we all do. And that, to me, is, is really what it's about. You know, I, I, I do advocacy work. I train women to run for office. I advocate for, for victims of domestic violence and honor violence because it's, it, those are issues that I'm passionate about. And I think that we need, they need a voice. And if I can be that voice, and, you know, that's why I color my hair purple in October. Right. Right. Because I have a bully pulpit that forces people to see it. Right. They, There's no way to avoid it. It may make they, them they uncomfortable. Have to, they, have, they have to deal with it. Right. They have to learn how to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's not about minimizing anything. It's about I have an opportunity, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about issues that are important to me personally mm-hmm. and, and advocate on behalf of those who don't really have a voice. Interesting. Okay. So here, I'll give you a little bit of trivia. Sure. This bank here used to be a movie theater. Okay. It was the this one... small only, movie theater. Yes. It was the one one screen... It was called the Clinton Point, and where McDonald's was, was a restaurant called the Dazadel, which was the local hangout. So we would go for a movie and then go to the Dazadel for a hangout. The Dazadel? The Dazadel. When did it change from that to McDonald's? <sighs> um, I think probably sometime in the early 90s. Now, do you remember what uh, what the first movie you saw? There, Grease. At the, the, when Grease was the first, was that the first movie you ever saw in a theater, no, or just here? Just that here. was here. Okay. <laughs> first movie I ever saw, I can't quite remember. I no, okay. Think. The first so movie? If we go straight, we're going to go into um, probably one of the oldest parts of town at Center Street. Okay. Some of the old homes that are here. It's part of our Great. historic district. Awesome. Um, the first movie I remember seeing was The Lion King. I was four years God, old. God, I'm so old. I was I was four <laughs> years old. And my 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 parents. Uh, well, my, I, I went with my with my mother, and she told me later. Uh, she told me recently that she had no idea if I knew what was going on because I was only four right. at the time. Until later that night at dinner, uh, my dad didn't come with us, and we were just sitting there eating dinner. And I was quiet, and all of a sudden I look up at him and I said, "Dad, if if I push you off a cliff, will I become king?" And my dad just like did a double take. And he goes, "What do you?" <laughs> Where did you come up with that? He never answered my question, though. <laughs> well, yeah. 